Well, good morning, Holt Church of the Nazarene. It is great to be gathered here together again today, isn't it? Um, Over the past few weeks, we have been sharing with you why we gather each Sunday. And we gather in this place at a specific time, in a specific place, to worship God, right? To learn from his word and to be encouraged in our faith, to be fueled by his spirit, to give him praise and to encourage others through our testimony of God's goodness and to give him praise. We also gather to encourage others through the testimony of God's goodness in our life. And then we are sent out from this place to spread his word to others, to give them hope through our speech, our attitudes, and our actions. As we gather, we are renewed spiritually. That is why it is important for us to gather together as a people of God. And that's why I'm glad that you all have chosen to gather here today together. We also know that many gather with us online, and we are appreciative of that. And as I share God's word, what he's laid on my heart with you today, if you're in this place, would you just once in a while just say an amen or respond in some sort of way to what I've said? so that others will know that it's important for us to do this, right? And we are engaged in what God is teaching us. But for you who are online also, would you please just say an amen in the comments? It's really important that we get acknowledgement also that you are hearing from the Lord and that he is speaking into your heart. Not that we're just showing up, but that we are experiencing what God has for us. And I'm glad for those who have gathered together in this place this morning. I'm also glad for those who are gathering with us online. Today we are going to look again at the life of Elijah. Now last week, Pastor Dana shared from 1 Kings 19. She shared that Elijah had won a major um, uh, showdown on on Mount Carmel. And Pastor Dana shared that Elijah was afraid because Jezebel threatened him into the wilderness and he sat underneath a broom tree he was depressed he was weary he was exhausted and he sat under that broom tree and he fell asleep and then an angel of the lord came to him and and said wake up and he noticed that there was a hot baked bread uh, uh, bread next to the coals and there was a vial of water there as well and so the angel found in 1st Kings 19 and I'll start with verse 9 through 21 (laughs) there he came to a cave where he spent the night but the Lord said to him what are you doing here Elijah Elijah replied I have zealously served the Lord Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed your people, your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to take my life too. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told Elijah. And Elijah stood there. The Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am all alone. I'm the only one left. And now they are trying to take my life too. Then the Lord told him, Go back the same way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Hazael, the king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, grants of Nimshi, to be king of Israel. And anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, from the town of abel Mahorala, to replace you as my prophet. Anyone who escapes from Hazael will be killed. 
by Jehu, and those who escape Jehu will be killed by Elisha. Yet I preserve 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. And now I'm going to continue. So Elijah went and found Elijah, son, Elisha, son of Shaphat, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elisha was plowing with the 12th team. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak across his shoulders and then walked away. Elisha left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah, and said to him, First, let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go with you. Elijah replied, Go on back, but think about what I have done to you. So Elisha returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. He passed around the meat to the townspeople, and they all ate. Then he went with Elijah as his assistant. This is the word of the Lord. Awesome. Well, first I want to start with some some insights um, from Pastor Dana that she shared last week. First of all, we can't survive the dog days of summer without God. Secondly, we must rely on God to sustain us physically, spiritually, and emotionally. And third, we must find our rest in God. So I want to know, how many of you have, have taken that to heart this week? How many of you have understood that you have to rely on God, that God is the one that sustains us physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and that our rust is in him? If you have found that this week, can you just give a hearty amen? Amen. Awesome. As I spent time in 1 Kings 18 and 19 this past week, I have been impressed with the richness of these passages of Scripture and the truth that we must rely on God to sustain us physically, spiritually, and emotionally. This past week, I had an appointment with my doctor, and she shared with me how tired she is. She is a Christian, and she relies on God, and she acknowledges him, and every time I go to see her, we have conversation about church and about the church's people and about how God has been with her on her journey. I've known her for almost 20 years, and she is a resilient person, but she shared with me that this time that she's been in, it has just made her her weary. She, like all of us, had hopes that the virus would be behind us and we would be back to normal. But in the last couple of months, she's lost five people to COVID, and that's more than she lost the first whole year that we were in, in experiencing COVID. She isn't the only one weary. I went to a Sparrow laboratory a couple of weeks ago to have um, a mammogram done actually and there's a lab there and the lady was talking to me and she said well the lab closes at two and I said okay I wasn't here for lab work anyway but okay well why why do they close so early I mean a lot of times people go to the lab in the afternoon right and she said well the problem is is they can't get phlebotomists to come and do the to take to draw the blood there's just a shortage and she said, I don't know what happened to them all. I guess they just don't want to work anymore. How many of you have heard that recently? I guess they just don't want to work anymore, right? Yeah. So Thursday, I went to get x-rays of my knee, and I had to go to three different places before I found one that actually had an x-ray technician who could x-ray my knee. And that x-ray technician shared with me that there's such a shortage that, that they can't get x-ray technicians and that he's working multiple hours to do the job. Um, we see this also in restaurants. There's limited seasoning, seating in restaurants and there's limited um, items on the menu. Have you guys noticed that as well? And then you go to the grocery store. I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but the people in the grocery store, well, they've shared with me that they're just getting tired of people. They're getting tired of people complaining that they can't find things and their grumpiness. And the truth of the matter is we're all weary, we're all tired, and we need to be encouraging one another and smiling at one another, right? And, and just helping people on this journey that we are in because it is a time of weariness. The number of people voluntarily leaving jobs rose by 164,000 in June of 2021. I spoke with someone um, recently that said that their hopes is that when the extra $300 goes away, that people will go back to work. 
But I got to tell you that the economists out there are saying that they don't think it's going to make a big difference because people have decided that it is, they, they like being able to have some flexibility in their time. They, um, they like being able to have, um, not have to go into a workplace all the time. So we don't know how things are going to be in the future, but we do know this. We have a God who hears us, a God who listens to us, and a God who is present with us, no matter what we are going through, right? I want you to hear this this morning. God is present with you. He has not left you. Regardless of what your weariness is from, maybe it's a natural byproduct of what's happening in the world. Maybe it's something that's happening to you personally. But God is with you. His presence is with you. And he will sustain you and renew your strength. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, we hear these words of encouragement. I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. Interestingly, fear is what led Elijah to run into the desert to begin with in our passage last week. You see, Elijah was imprisoned by the fear of Jezebel's threat. He sinks into despair, unbelief, and ultimately this is what sends him into the wilderness. We remember from last week that the angel of the Lord appeared to him as he sat under the broom tree and told him to eat and drink. Next to the fire was that bread and that cake and that water. And Elijah fell asleep again. And what did the angel of the Lord do? He woke him up and what did he say to him? Does anybody remember? Eat, right, eat. Because the journey that you are going to be on will be too difficult for you if you do not have sustenance. You see, God is the one that gives us the sustenance to continue on our journey, right? When we join together as a church, we're encouraged to eat of God's word and to drink of the living water offered through his spirit. Gathered together in the presence of God's people and in the encouragement of his word, we are given sustenance to continue on in the journey. At the end of service today, you'll see on your tables is a plate, and on that plate is communion. And um, at the end of service today, we're going to be sharing in Holy Communion together. So I am going to ask you at the end of service, as we share in communion, for someone to choose to take the gloves at your table and put them on and to break the bread into pieces for the number of people sitting at your table. And then I'm going to ask you just momentarily, once all of the communion is ready, Pastor Dana is going to come in and share with us the importance. And then, when we are ready to receive the elements, for a brief moment, please take off your, or take down your masks and receive the elements together. But again, while we are in service today, I want to thank each one of you for being masked this morning, for the protection of everyone here. Thank you so much for doing that. But now we find Elijah at the mountain of God, Mount Sinai. He's in a cave or a cleft of the mountain where he spent the night. And the Lord comes to him and he asks, Elijah, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel, they've broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. And I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to take my life too. Sometimes on this journey, we feel all alone. And I think that's what Elijah wanted God to hear. He wanted God to hear him say, Lord, I have served you faithfully. I've done what you called me to do. You called me to be a prophet. You called me to go to the people and, and tell them to choose who they were going to serve, if they were going to serve the one true God. I've done that faithfully, Lord, and now everyone else is gone. I'm all alone, and my very life is being threatened. Sometimes on this journey that we're on, we feel all alone. But God never left Elijah. And now he tells Elijah to go out and stand in his presence. So Elijah went out and it says the Lord passed by. And a giant windstorm hit the mountain. It was so forceful that the mountain split and the mountain rocks came loose. But the Lord, he was not in the wind. 
Then an earthquake came. And again, the Lord was not in the quake. And then a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. The sound of a gentle whisper. And at that, Elijah took his cloak and put it over his face because he knew that the presence of the Lord was there in that gentle whisper. Elijah stands at the mount of the cave and the Lord asks him a question again. What are you doing here, Elijah? I have zealously served the Lord, he goes on to say. Mm -hmm. I've torn down, um, I, but the people of Israel have broken your covenant. They've torn down your altars. They've taken away your prophets and I'm the only one left and they're trying to end my life too. And this is what God wanted him to know. Elijah was a prophet of God who served him faithfully. He was called to let the people know that they needed to make a decision. They were either to acknowledge God as the one true God and follow him or claim Baal as their God and follow him. Interestingly, why Ahab was king of Israel, more evil was done than under any other king. And he aroused more anger in the Lord than any other king before him. He set up idol worship, worship of other gods. He spurned the goodness of God by setting up two golden calves to worship. The shrines with the priests, um, the shrines had priests who were not Levites, and God's entire system of holy days, sacrifices, and worship changed into man-made systems focused on worshiping golden calves. And Bethel and Dan became places of worship instead of God's chosen city, Jerusalem. And the miracle on, Mar on Mount Carmel, Elijah proved that to the people that the Lord was the one true God. Elijah did as he was called to do. God asked Elijah, what are you doing here? Then God listens to his complaints. God asks us, what are you doing here? What are you doing here this morning? Sometimes we go before the Lord and we're afraid to share with him what's really on our hearts, where our fears really are. And he asks us, what are you doing here? God knew all about Elijah's fears. He knew what sent him out into the wilderness. But he wanted Elijah to know that his presence was with him through all of it. What are you doing here? And know this, God listens to our complaints too, just as he listened to Elijah's complaints. It's okay to be honest with God. It's okay to share with him your true feelings. I've said it before and I'll say it again, because God knows your heart. Then God spoke to him in a still, small voice, a whisper. God speaks to his disciples in words and sentences and nudges and prompt promptings and through other people. Elijah recognized he was in the presence of the Lord because he pulled his cloak over his face. You know, when you are in the presence of the Lord, you sense his presence. You know his presence. You just sense the presence of the Lord all around you, right? Elijah gets another assignment from the Lord. God told him to go back the way he came, to travel the wilderness to Damascus, and to anoint a new king, and to anoint another king, and then to anoint Elisha to be his successor as a prophet. Elijah did this, and he spent six years mentoring Elijah, which is another sermon for another day. But here's what I want you to grasp this morning. Elijah felt alone. He said to the people, I am the only prophet of the Lord left in 1 Kings 18, 22. Elijah went alone into the desert and he isolated himself from the people, from his servant, um, from people leaving his servant behind. He isolated himself. But the presence of the Lord was still with him. He shares with the Lord his complaint. Twice he told God, I have zealously served you. And I'm afraid. I'm afraid. He told the Lord, I'm afraid. He analyzed his life's work as a prophet. 
and he feels it amounts to nothing. Sometimes when we serve the Lord faithfully for so many years, and many, many of you have served the Lord for so many years, you've served him faithfully, you've walked with him faithfully, you feel like, well, what's left? What's left for me to do? We look at our accomplishments and we come up short, and that's what was going on with Elijah. He measured his worth by his accomplishments, and he came up short. This isn't about who you are, but it's about whose you are. You see, our purpose isn't in about what we do, but about who we belong to. Your value is not determined by your victory, but by your relationship with God Almighty. Elijah was God's precious possession, not by what he did or didn't do, because he believed in God. He had a relationship with God, and when, he, when God spoke, he listened. So, so two things. God listened to Elijah, but Elijah listened to God. And he did what God told him to do. And that's important for us to understand. God's presence is always with us. God listens to us, but we too need to listen to God. And we need to act on what God asks us to do. And that's what Elijah did. He did exactly what God told him to do. I want you to know that when you are experiencing feelings of painful isolation, turn to prayer and have a personal conversation with the Lord because God cares for you and he is always with you. God then told Elijah to go back the way he came, and he gave him another assignment. In this story, God God answered um, for Elijah three basic questions that we all ask. Who am I? What is my identity? Elijah was a prophet of God. Do I belong? Am I all alone? Elijah felt he was all alone, but there were 7,000 others who followed the Lord. What is my purpose? Elijah was given another assignment, a continued purpose. God wants us to know this morning that if you believe and seek to know him, you are his precious possession. He will never leave you. His presence will always be with you, and you are a child of God. He wants you to know this morning that you are not alone, that there is a great number of believers who follow the Lord. And when we gather together, that's who we're with, his great number of believers, right? And our purpose, what is our purpose? Well, it's what I said in the beginning. Our purpose, it's always to worship God and to learn from his word and to be encouraged in our faith and to be fueled by his spirit and to give him praise and to encourage others through the testimony of God's goodness in our life. And then we are sent out from this place to spread his word to the world by our speech and our attitudes and our actions. And this is what I want you to know this morning. Father, I thank you for your word. There's so much richness in your word, Lord. And so many people right now, Lord, they they feel weary and exhausted. And yet, Lord, your presence is with them all. Those that know you and those that don't, Lord, your presence is with you because your provenient grace is always, always calling, Lord, always wooing, always wanting people to come to know who you are, to know that you are the God of gods, that you are the Lord God Almighty, that you want to be with them, that you want a relationship with the people that you created. I pray, Lord God, that if there are any listening today who do not know you as their Lord and Savior, today would be the day that they say, I believe I believe that you are God Almighty, and, and, I, and I want to walk with you. I want to know you more. I want to build this relationship with you. I want to understand that your presence is with me. I want to understand, Lord, because I want to belong. You see, Lord, there are so many people out there who feel all alone and isolated, but those who belong to you, we are not alone because we have one another and we have you. And then, Lord, we we all want to know that we have purpose, and you have given a purpose to all of us. Our purpose, Lord, is to love you and to love one another. 
And I pray, Lord, that we would live out that purpose to your glory and your honor. And I ask all of this in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Ooh.